Okay, we've done a lot of introductory work to make sure that everybody's on the same page. I finally now want to get into actually coding in some CSS, taking a look at different CSS properties and so on. And we're going to get started with something called inline formatting, which I'll get to in just a second. Before I get to inline formatting, I just want to mention very quickly that I've decided to switch out to using Coda on the Mac here, at least, rather than using text edit, because I realized that as we begin coding in some of our CSS and maybe a little bit more HTML and so on, it's going to be much easier for you to see what I'm doing here inside Coda, because Coda color codes everything. So all of my code will be highlighted at least for you on screen. So making it a little easier for you to follow along. Okay, more importantly, inline CSS or inline formatting as it's referred to. Inline formatting is a great way to get started with CSS. It's a great way to get used to coding in properties and things like this. However, I will say that it does go against the sort of the primary principles of CSS somewhat. One of the big, big deals of CSS is creating the formatting once, defining the properties once, and then using that formatting over and over and over inside your document. And inline CSS is going to really be all about creating properties that are applied on an item by item basis. But as I say, it is a great way to get started with CSS. So what I'm going to do here anyway, I'm going to show you how to recreate some of the very simple formatting that you've already seen via HTML, but we're going to do so using inline CSS or inline formatting. So here's what I'd like you to do inside your code inside whatever coding application you are using at the moment, go ahead and look for your opening body tag, this fella right here. He should be just above Ontario, of course. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click just after the Y in body, and I'll put in a space. Now, what we have to do if we want to make use of inline CSS is we actually have to make use of an HTML attribute. Remember, we talked about elements and attributes. So this attribute is actually the style attribute. So go ahead and type in style, and then equals, and then open quote. Now, before we go any further, I do want to mention that this style attribute that we are working with here, and this is pretty important, we can actually use this attribute on any HTML element, whether it's a body tag here, or an H1, or an H2, or a table, or an image, or whatever you have. So these style attributes, you can apply them to any HTML element. So I've typed in style equals, and then open quote, and then from this point forward, I'm going to be coding in CSS. So earlier, I had shown you how to change the background color to red using HTML. Here, we're going to do it using CSS. So I'm going to type in the background dash color CSS property. Go ahead and do the same if you're following along, followed by a full colon and a space. And then I would type in the color I want to use, in my case, red. And then what I would do is I would finish things off here by typing in a semicolon, and then I would close my quote just like that. So this is exactly how to create inline CSS. Now, a couple of things before we go and check this out inside our browser. First of all, everything inside my page is HTML, except what I see between the two quotes. That's CSS. So in other words, as we've said a couple of times here already, CSS is going to sit inside the HTML, inside the HTML framework, if you will. And notice that the coding itself looks different from HTML. There's no equals, there's no quotes, there's nothing like that. It's all full colons and semicolons and hyphens and things like this, right? That's how CSS looks. So it visually looks different than HTML. Okay, let's go and see how this looks inside the browser. Let's save our file, control or command S, and then flip back over to our browser and refresh control or command R. And there we are. There's our glaring red background color. Now, this is meant to be a very, very basic introductory to working with inline formatting, but there's a bunch of other things that I want to show you here. So I'm going to go ahead and continue on with my discussion of inline CSS or inline formatting, but I'm going to do so continued in the next exercise. So just sit tight and we'll continue on.